Welcome to the Coach's Corner. My name is Scott Knox. Uh, the Coach's Corner is spot sponsored by Cocos Pizza. Today I have Coach Ignacio. Um, we're going to talk a little bit with Coach Ignacio. I've got the Fitz Boardman game coming up on Friday, Old Steel Valley Federal League uh, rivals. And um, we're going to talk to Coach Ignacio about the upcoming game and the upcoming season. It's a little over 48 hours away, and uh, opening kickoff is getting closer. Coach Ignacio, uh, with the COVID situation, obviously has affected the total amount of games and season as such. How has that affected your preparation for the upcoming season and obviously Austin Town Fetch? Um, it, it really hasn't changed what we do on a daily basis. You know, you had to work around some things and, and battle a little bit different adversity than what we're used to. Um, you know, we, we got shut down for two days at one point and, um, you know, it's just you had to roll with the punches. We, we told our kids early on, control the controllables. Any of the decisions and guidelines that we have to abide by are out of our control. Um, we had to do a good job uh, since March in preparing from our off-season workouts and things like that online to uh, get ready for the season. And our kids have responded and done, a, done an exceptional job at that. Okay, Coach. Now, with the six-game season, could you give us a little bit of um... – Background as far as when we found out from Coach DeWine that uh, Ohio High School football was officially going to be played. I know we all high schools basically had their schedule set. Could you give us a little bit of quick glimpse into how did that change the six games, the playoffs as such? Yeah, so um, obviously our 10-game schedule was, was put into jeopardy immediately. Um, we had been communicating with several schools on – you know, the what ifs to make sure that we had uh, things lined up for every situation. And our athletic director, Marco Marinucci, did a phenomenal job at that. And and we communicated um, unlimited times throughout the day. Um, so he's been, um, you know, a phenomenal resource to be able to lean on and help me in, in work through that scheduling uh, debacle. But, um, you know, once – we were supposed to open up with Erie McDowell and, and PA was up in the air and, and then, you know, he came out with his statements. So I know the athletic directors from the area met immediately and started trying to work together a, a six game schedule. Um, and, and we were able to do that. Coach, you're coming in. This is your eighth year coming up at Boardman and uh, you, you've had extreme success. Out of the uh, last 10 years, uh, your Spartans have uh, been in the playoffs the last four out of 10 years. 2017 and 18, you made the playoffs, uh, did not make it last year. But um, what, what do you think, uh, how, how much do you talk about that with your team, with the playoffs, and try to balance that out with your first opponent coming up, such as Fitch? Yeah, with especially with them dropping to Division <laughs> two. So, you know, our schedule has always been a tough schedule at Boardman. Um, I think we play the elite competition in our division throughout the state and, and across several divisions. Um, so our kids have to, they had to learn to, to be consistent. And, you know, um, I learned those lessons from coaching under guys like DJ and Mark DeRamo and, and Gary Smith and who had done it prior to me and playing for Bill Bourne. So, um, you just continue that foundation they instilled in me and um, tremendous work ethic. And, um, you know, we talk about playoffs all the time here, you know, and, and I expect it to be an annual thing. Um, you know, we haven't had near the success that I want to have. Um, and we haven't won a playoff game yet. So those are, those are always goals that, that we have in front of us. Every senior class, we talk about not just making the playoffs, but getting in the playoffs and making some noise and, um, we've just come up against some tough foes the first week um, of the playoffs, and and they they got our number. So it is what it is. We're going to keep plugging away and hopefully get in this year, and everyone's kind of in this year, but um, hopefully we can make some noise. Now, this is the first op opener with Fitch since 1966, which is quite a, quite a few years ago. But, uh, again – uh, being rivals in the Steel Valley and, and rivals in the uh, Federal League and now the All-American Conference. Um, could you give us a little bit about uh, 
your seniors, your class, your underclassmen, some of your returning players that are going to make an impact. Um, could you give us a little background on, on that type, type of setup? Yes. Yeah, so our, our senior class is led by obviously our three captains, which are Jake Powell, um, who's going to be a starting defensive end for us. Uh, Marco Stiliana, who we missed last year. He, he broke his um, leg in baseball and probably would have been a two-way starter for us last year as a junior. Um, so missed his efforts and he's back and healthy and um, speaks volumes about a kid that uh, his teammates voted captain and, and didn't have any playing time last year. So, um, And then Anthony Miko is, is returning at, uh, on the offense and defensive line for us. Um, we've got some other seniors that, that – Got tremendous playing time last year. Nick Winston is starting three technique for us on defense. He's going to get a little time on offense. Um, you know, Luke Huzika is probably going to get some time at tight end um, and, and possibly some safety uh, things and, and going to be a long snapper for us. So um, we always say here that our, our tradition is based on our senior class. Um, our junior class is really talented. And, and when people come in, it's not to neglect our senior class, but, you know, all, all of our statistical leaders offensively are juniors. So Sean O'Hora returning at tailback, who had a tremendous year last year, um, and will play on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, Terrence Thomas, who was one of the area leading receivers, um, just a tremendous athlete and will play some corner for us also. Actually repping at quarterback right now with, with the absence of Jason Treveri. And, and Jason's um, you know battling back from an injury that, that he suffered over the summer. Um, but outside those guys, you've got Cam Thompson at wide receiver. Um, you've got uh, Joseph Farrell on the offensive line. So we, we've got tremendous depth with our younger groups that, that I'm uh, exceptionally pleased with. On your the offensive and defensive and, and special teams as a whole, what, what do you feel what do you feel your strengths are as far as both sides of the ball and in your special teams area? Yeah, offensively, I think we have guys that can spread the field. Um, you know, we can run it and throw it, you know, with the, the wide receiving crew that we have back, um, you know, we're, we're a spread offense. So we have the ability to go up tempo at times and, and get teams on, the, on their heels, uh, defensively, um, defense, we've done some different things, uh, this year, but, um, leaning on a lot of guys that got good playing experience at, at younger ages last year and hope that, that that pays off. You know, guys like Cortland Love um, is, is going to play probably defensive end for us and, and some on the offensive line as well. Um, so defensively, we got to continue to get that debt. We need leadership there. Um, we've got some guys that definitely have the ability to do it. Um, we're just looking for them to flip that switch uh, and, and want to be hungry to play on the defensive side of the ball. Um, Special teams-wise, we lost Tommy Frida from last year who kicked for us for four years, but um, have a good young kicker in Carson Essid, who's a soccer kid. He's going to do um, both kicking and punting duties this year. Um, we feel that he gives us an advantage because he's got a strong leg and and still three years to go. So we're thoroughly impressed with him. Now, with the lack of being able to scrimmage outside against outside competition – and obviously you got guys fighting for positions and creating a depth chart and, and as such, how's that affected? How's that, how much has that affected your preparation up until the first game without any outside scrimmages? Yeah, it definitely leaves that question mark on whether our guys are ready to hit and come to play. I mean, it's usually you have a pretty good idea through two scrimmages of, you know, guys that have stepped up through the, those competitions and, kind of filled some holes that were question marks. So you kind of feel like there's a sense that you may still have a little bit of that lingering um, due to not being able to scrimmage. Um, it's not like we didn't try. Um, we had several schools lined up and for whatever reason, either their athletic departments wouldn't let them travel or, you know, we had a ton of area schools that were shut down. Um, and then you got to weigh the risk. If, if you go against another team in scrimmage and, and some schools responded and said, if, if someone tests positive, then both are out for week one. So um, a lot of teams erred on the side of caution. And so we did an inner squad, which was different and unique. Uh, we've done that in years past, but always had those two scrimmages that we did beyond that. But um, it'll be interesting week one to see us go up against a, an opponent and hit someone else for, for a change.
Yeah, and obviously being the two of the bigger schools in Mahoning County, uh, enrollment-wise, um, getting on the uh, Austin Town Fitz side, obviously T.J. Parker, Coach Parker, in his first year, and as you're providing or preparing for the upcoming opponent, not being able to to be able to see them in any type of scrimmage or any type of setup in your preparation as far as kind of what they're running on offense, defense. Do you think there's any big change there being, I know he's a Fitch grad, but obviously him coming in and getting his first head coaching experience, do you foresee any big changes there as far as your preparation for what they're going to do offensively and defensively? Um, they're going to be somewhat different. I mean, anytime you got a change in staff, they're, they're not going to keep everything the same. So um, they've got tremendous athletes there. So I know that they're going to try to spread the ball out offensively. Um, you know, exactly the formations and things like that that they're going to use. You know, it's it's a question mark, but um, I'm sure in our, our experience, we've seen a lot of that anyway. Our kids just have to be able to adapt fairly quickly on Friday night um, for what they're going to be presented with. Um, they had a, specifically the, the change defensively um, with, with Mancuso getting there and, and running the defense. But uh, Joe McMahon's still there and familiar with what he's done for years and, um, you know, had the opportunity to kind of kind of peek at them a little bit. Um, you know, went back and watched some Westminster film when, when TJ was there and stuff like that. You know, you just kind of had to think outside the box and, and use the resources that were available to you. Yeah, it goes back to the old cliche. You still got to block and tackle, minimize the turnovers and make some special team plays. Uh, real quick on your coaching staff, on Boardman's coaching staff, any changes there, Coach, uh, within the past year, or is it still relatively the same? Uh, it's it's remained relatively the same, although it, my coaching staff's changed almost every year I've been here. It's just the nature of the beast anymore. Um, you get young guys that grow up and move on, and um, you know some guys that trickle back to the program. So um, I was fortunate enough to get Chris Reach back with us after being with Crest, Crestview for a year, and uh, – Chris was our offensive coordinator two years ago, so he's working with Carmen Tarantino as the offensive coordinators. They do a f phenomenal job and have always worked well together. Um, brought a, a line coach in that had previously coached Ursuline, um, Bobby Pogan, um, who works extremely well with our young guys and is extremely personable with those kids, and if they bought into him. and um, Got a young kid, Tony Sluss, that's going to – help he, he got the phys ed job over at center middle school so he's helping out our freshmen and comes up and works in the weight room with our varsity guys and helps out varsity wise also so those are some of the new faces here as far as key keys to getting the win on friday i mean i know you talk to your kids every day uh, as far as the, the program wise um what do you think are going to be really the the main things that at the end of the night when you go into the locker room you're going to say okay we hit all the checklist, all the boxes were checked. These are the keys. What are some of those keys to, to beating Fitch on Friday? Yeah, so the, the things we've preached to our kids this week, um, eliminate the big plays. They have an offensive uh, mentality where they can hit big plays and they've got athletes all over the place. So you got to minimize space. And the big thing for us throughout the offseason was our yards after contact coming in from last year. That was the one huge statistic for us defensively at it really cost us games, and um, it's something that we've really worked on and preached on and um, have let our guys know that that is an area that we better improve on or else, you know, we're going to struggle again this year. Um, it seems like kids come in and out of your program, and a lot of them want the, the recognition of being in an offensive set, but, you know, football is won and lost on the defensive side of the ball. If you don't stop anybody, you're going to be in big trouble, and, and – We've prided ourselves on playing great defense here for years, and, and this year's um, going to have the same expectation. Obviously, Friday's game is going to be very physical again, like they always are between Fitch and Boardman, and uh, we're really looking forward to the to the matchup. Is there anything else you would like to add um, to this today, Coach, that, uh, that we haven't covered? Anything you want to add? No, I'm just excited for our kids, our community. You know, for a long time, you didn't think this this was going to happen, and you're still kind of pinching yourself, you know. But, you know, the coaches across the state of Ohio are excited. We know that our kids um, need this, and, you know, th this is a telltale sign what high school football provides for our young people and our communities to be able to get excited about and bring people together in, in times like we're facing, like the pandemic. 
Can't agree with you anymore. Coach, we appreciate your time. We thank you for your time, and, and we certainly wish you the best of luck on Friday. And uh, looking forward to an injury-free game and a well-played game. Good luck. Appreciate it, Scotty. Thank you.